In the United States, you have about 1.1, 1.2 million people that are infected with HIV, still living to this day. And out of that, um, there's about 100,000 that are in Florida. Out of that 100,000 in Florida, we have about 1,400, 1,500 that are here in the area 2B, which consists of eight different counties. And out of that, 500 of them are here at Vaughn. They receive care here at Vaughn. My name is Antonio Jose Carrion, and I run an advanced pharmacy practice experience in HIV and ambulatory care. Um, I work with Bond Community Health Center to not only treat their patients, but give students that experience in HIV, so that way they're able to care for patients as well. My role is to educate the patients about their medication. Sometimes patients come to me and they have never been on a medica medication before, um, and they have a lot of questions about the medication, such as how exactly does it work, some of the side effects that they should look out for, and most importantly, how to take the medication so that they can adhere to it, and that way they can receive the best benefit from it. So with that, I will also look at their laboratory values to make sure that the medication is doing its job um, and that can also mean collaborating with the physicians here at Bond Community Health Center to make sure that we all are doing the best that we can to make sure the patient is being taken care of. ADAP is for those that can afford medications. Usually HIV medications can run at least $2,000 and up per month. Sometimes it's not about the medications. It could be that a person doesn't have their, uh, their lights, you know, and that can be the number one concern. That could be the barrier to them taking their medication as prescribed. It could be that they're homeless, so we need to find them a home. It could be we need to help them find a job, and that can help with alleviate the depression that's associated with HIV. Um, a lot of people uh, may fall into the category of having a lower socioeconomic status, so that means they don't have a lot of education, they don't have a high paying job. So. You know, we, we have to find ways to help, you know, treat those patients and help them with their care. And it's not always about the medications. It's sometimes it goes beyond the pharmacy. You know, our uh, fam, you having a presence at the Caribbean Dance Festival, the, the annual Grape Harvest Festival, um, going and doing surveys, collaborating with different agencies. We're doing a lot um, to make sure that we have a healthier nation. National average for viral suppression is about 37%. Their virus is controlled. Florida's an average is still around the 30 something percent, but Bond has been reporting about 63%. So that means that what they've been doing here, all the attention, all the linkages, the services, the support system, the entire care team and our involvement with them has proven to be very effective. I, I think that it's important to show people how compassionate you are about what you're doing. I don't have a job, I have a career. I actually have a life. I enjoy what I do every day with helping people and also making sure that I give students an experience or the knowledge to be able to do that um, you know, when they graduate and if they choose to work with a community health center or just work with HIV patients in general. Uh, we are at Neighborhood Medical Center. I'm Dr. Otis Kirksey. I'm a professor of pharmacy practice at Family College of Pharmacy and operate a diabetes disease management service here at Neighborhood Medical Center. If you look at how much money we spend on diabetes management alone, $172 billion including direct and indirect costs. If you look at how much it costs to treat a patient for a foot amputation, uh, we can prevent that. Okay, we can save taxpayers money. We can save those patients, the morbidity associated with uh, our amputation, the miss, the missed days at work, and so forth. So when I say safety net, I, too, I mean that. It's a safety net. It keeps people from dropping out. It's very good work here in the community because you actually get to serve those who would normally not be able uh, to uh, have any type of service like this. So we're actually here doing just great work. Um, we're monitoring their diabetes, their blood pressure, their cholesterol. It's a college town. I mean, you have the college students here, which is wonderful, but for diabetics, not so great because of the fact that you have all of these fast food restaurants here, which is pretty much good for the college students as far as budgets and things go, but for a diabetic, it can be a nightmare. High blood pressure and diabetes were out of control, both very high. I've been coming to Neighborhood Health Center um, since 2009. The reason I came here was because for high blood pressure, diabetes, and depression and my health has really changed so much. 
everything is under control. My, my high blood pressure, diabetes, everything changed. It's up to you, the, the patient. Dr. Kirsty is very encouraging. And taking the classes, that's when I noticed it's gonna work. The role of the pharmacist is rapidly changing. We used to stand behind the counter and, and count pills. Now, you know, the technicians are now doing a lot of that. Pharmacists are getting from behind the counter and doing what we call disease management, in which we can actually work with the physicians to help manage the patients so that we can prevent the long-term complications associated with them. The center offers a rich environment for teaching. We're trying to create a model or I guess you can say a trademark characteristic of our students and that's number one the commitment to giving back and number two understanding that health disparities are real and that you know in order for us to improve the overall health of the community and I mean that in a general sense we have to target those disparities you know and bring them up to par. The reason why this clinic is so good for experience for students is they really get to see the real deal. When you're a student, you kind of at this point just see uh, the black and white version of things um, on page. Here you actually hands on get to see uh, what's going on. You've read about this all these years and how glucose can affect things. You actually get to see the actual effects of the disease here in this clinic. So that's why it's very good for students because they actually get to see what diabetes actually does. First of all, they are responsible for being knowledgeable of that patient before that patient comes in. So before they see that patient, they already know what the patient's medical history is. They know the medication that the patient is on. They've already looked at the renal function and determined whether or not we need to make any dose adjustments, whatever, okay? Once the patients get here, then they triage, okay? Uh, meaning that they do the vitals. They're checking the blood pressure. They weigh them, they uh, check their blood glucose. If they notice that they haven't had an A1C, then they will take them into the lab and do an A1C. Once they've been triaged, then we see the patients together. I love having the students. Uh, it's, so, uh, it's so wonderful just from where I used to be a student here and just seeing them in a setting and actually being able to teach them. And I don't know, family kind of nurtures the students in a way, so to speak. They kind of you know, give you that extra. When they leave here, they're pretty confident and, uh, and comfortable, you know, doing the finger sticks and counseling the patients on, on their medications because they are responsible for not managing just the diabetes meds, but all the meds on the patient's profile. Them you, it prepares you very well. I always say, if you can make it in FAMU, you can make it anywhere in life.